day nine. Everything hangs in balance. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, let's just flip a coin or something. Don't you think it's still kind of an important decision? It's not the fate of everything, but it's the fate of a lot of things. It's the future of human beings in space. It's not what I wanted. None of these things are what I wanted. What are you fighting for, then? I mean, it's not everything I wanted. I was fighting for everything I wanted. And this is as close as it, to it as I got. That's not enough. Well, I mean, it could be better. <laughs> I love you both so much. What complete brats that can't be pleased. Don't tell me you're fine with it. No way. You're right. It could be so much better. See? So I'm fine with, whichever, with whichever ending we get. I want a better ending, too. Wanting a better end doesn't mean I'm fine with whatever. Why not? Yeah, what do you want? I want... What we want. Us, too. <laughs> That's why it's fine either way. Lunatera, I think you haven't understood something. This isn't the ending. We don't need one ending. No matter how the future turns out, no matter who wins, we can take whatever ending we get and make the ending we really want out of it. It's not like it doesn't matter. No, no matter what future we get, can't we just make it the one we wanted? Just like we did before the ending. Okay, sure. Let's pick our favorite. We don't need a true ending. Whatever it is, we'll make it the true ending. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so this is the Easter egg ending. I'm just going to save that. <laughs> we could literally go back and... Uh... This is on LT's route, so... Let's just go home. Oh, I knew you'd choose us at the end. Even if you didn't choose me. All that matters is that you're coming home. Hi, Hallie. Hello. I'm here. I was just startled. Why are you replying? You never reply. You never answer my text messages. Since, you're mes since you keep messaging me, I thought you'd be less surprised. Sorry about that. Don't start. I'll literally never, ever forgive you. Sure. That's fine. I'm not apologizing to you. You have so much to apologize for, but it's only to me. Are you saying sorry about something else you're trying to do? Maybe. There's a compromise I want you to consider. I should have expected one more betrayal, even in the end. No, it's more like I want to make sure you hold up your end of the bargain. No negotiation. The terms of surrender must be unequivocal. That's the only way they will allow us to return. Really, it's not a change to the deal at all. I'm just asking how about how we interpret them. You shouldn't, because I'm going to stop you if you pull anything. Really, I will. Very, very easily. Don't worry about that part. Well, in that case, I'm not going to be sorry at all. Oh. I'm disappointed, Saturn. I expected more from you. I should have the same percentage. I wanted to see if the Easter egg en ending only triggered when you had 50% for everyone. In this case, I went back to Saturn and I got both uh, Cradle's Graces and Memorial Foundation to 75%. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Sorry, wait. That really just is the best thing you could have ever said to me. Are you sure there's no bitterness behind that laughter, Saturn? think you could admonish me for not impressing you enough at this point? 
No sense of failure? If you're mad, how can I possibly consider that failure? I was just expecting more. More cosmic disappointment. A true ruining of the universe. Do you expect me to believe you're happy with this outcome? The Memorial Foundation has such low ambition. Interesting. Because I did! Deus, why don't you try being more realistic? I have nothing to lose in return. Oh, yes, of course. Oops. curious, because, yeah, we did. I did side with... They should have been equal. I wonder what decides that logic in the end. I'm curious. Once more with clarity. Everything hangs in balance. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, let's just flip a coin or something. Don't you think it's still kind of an important decision? It's not the fate of everything, but it's the fate of a lot of things. It's the future of human beings in space. It's not what I wanted. None of these things are what I, things I wanted. What are you fighting for, then? I mean, it's not everything I wanted. I was fighting for everything I wanted. And this is as close to it as I got. Uh, it's not enough. Well, I mean, it could be better. <laughs> I love you both so much. I'm a complete brats that can't be pleased. Don't tell me you're fine with it. No way, you're right. It could be so much better. See? So I'm fine with whichever ending we get. I want a better ending, too. Wanting a better ending doesn't mean I'm fine with whatever. Why not? Yeah, what do you want? I want... what we want. Us, too. That's why it's fine either way. Lunatera, I think you haven't understood something. This isn't the ending. how the future turns out, no matter who wins, we can take whatever ending we get and make the ending we really want out of it. It's not like it doesn't matter. No matter what future we get, can't we make it the one we wanted? Just like we did before the ending. Okay, sure. Let's pick our favorite. We don't need a true ending. Whatever it is, we'll make it the true ending. I'm sorry, I had, to, I had to come back here just to... This is a... This is a perfect note to end on, really. Playing my, my favorite song on the, on the soundtrack. I wonder if, if you're in a two-way tie, it decides your ending based on the first... Uh, betrayal outcome you picked. Which would make sense, then, how... A, I wound up with the Memorial Foundation on that Saturn, Saturn path. It's interesting. But this... You could call it an Easter egg, but it's... really a perfect summation of the, 
gain. You're starting out on a side, working for a faction who doesn't really have your best interests at heart. You're in a war, a three-way war. In the end, it doesn't matter who wins. It's the ultimate sign of agency, I suppose, that no matter who comes out on top, you're still able to step up and make the ending that... and make your own true ending out of who... out of the result, out of whoever comes out on top in this petty war for control of space. Not even control of space. Because this is after Earth gave up on space. Petty war to decide what should happen to the remnants, to those left behind up in space. Cradle's Graces wanted to. wanted to stay in space. Thought there was a future in space. Cradle's Graces wanted to spread that to Earth by destabilizing Earth's gravity to force them to conform to space. Celestial Mechanics really was founded with the promise of giving everyone involved with them a new body, something beyond human, the truest self, the aversion impulse. But all along, the caveat there is that they were run by a man who was in all honesty, a piece of shit. Who wanted to use their desires to be something more than themselves. Wanted to use their desires for his own selfish benefit. Which would have essentially turned everyone under him into the enemy, into something alien, into the existential threat. Memorial Foundation had good intentions. They wanted to bring everyone home. They were working under an Earth that would much rather have killed the pilots who stayed up in space. They were working with the desire to bring these pilots home, incorporate them back into Earth's gravity. Earth, who really thought so little of them that they would have had no hesitation in just outright killing them. And Earth, who's really afraid of what they, what they might bring back with them from space. Afraid of how space might have changed them. Afraid it might have changed them into something that they don't find acceptable. Because in the end, it's intrinsic in all of humanity what they designate as alien. What they designate as abhorrent, unnatural. And in, by forcing the pilots to come home, Moral Foundation would be forcing them to conform to what humanity felt was acceptable. Would be forcing those pilots to really suppress parts of themselves, which, in this day and age, you shouldn't have to stay in that closet, so to speak. You shouldn't have to keep that part of yourself tucked away. You shouldn't have to hide those parts of yourself, but it's just really what makes me feel like the
if there's really any bad guy in this game, any outright uh, enemy, well, number one, it's Epteus, because he just outright wanted to start a war to help bring people together under his watch. Because we know how well wars unite the population. And two, it's just Earth and the attitudes that we often have on Earth. Attitudes we have toward our fellow man, toward our fellow humans. And I, I guess... That's why the Memorial Foundation ending really resonated with me the most. On a personal level, in terms of these characters, everything that they've gone through, the true endings that they, they each managed to find in their own faction's path are good for them. Pluto lived a life where they told her she had to be the strongest. They told her she had to be the best. They told her she had to be perfect. And she wasn't, and she begged them to give up on her. But they didn't give up on her. They just kept telling her she had to be the best. She had to be perfect. She had to carry their hopes and dreams, and she couldn't do it, but she had to keep trying. She wanted them to give up on her, but she couldn't tell them that. She couldn't bring herself to say no. She couldn't bring herself to think of herself in that situation. She just had to keep go going on, being strong, carrying all of their hopes and dreams, carrying that burden. She had to be strong for everyone else, because... No one else knew how to be strong for her. When it comes time for Saturn and Lunaterra to finally state that intervention, to finally put the ball on her court, she had to decide for herself what she wanted the future to be. And that she did. She didn't have to bear the weight of the future alone anymore. That made it okay. It wasn't the, an ideal outcome by any stretch of the imagination, but it was something that they were all... It was a burden they were all carrying together, the three of them. And that was enough. They were making do with what they had. Raising gardens and forests across the solar system. Making something fantastic out of what they were left with. Putting themselves in conflict with Earth, but in a way that Earth could only send more ship cells up to fight them. They couldn't send their autonomous death robots up. They were forced to actually send more people like them up. Some of them stayed. Occasionally some of them got taken home. So in their own way, they In their own way, they were gradually changing Earth from within. Even when those... Some of the people who came up to join them brought home in their own way they were changing Earth from within. It's a slow, gradual change happening outside Earth and left some hope for change within Earth, too. In 
Saturn's case, she was... She wanted to be the perfect ace, and she was the perfect ace. She was everything that Epteus wanted, and Epteus took advantage of her in ways that were utterly reprehensible. But then when Epteus realized that her perfect mindset wouldn't, wasn't what he needed to complete his uh, awful plans, he tossed her aside, and that shaped her into the... Saturn, who we saw at the beginning of the game. Someone who just wanted the attention. Someone who just wanted to pick fights, get noticed, make out with some hot girls, uh, fight with them, make out with them. What's the difference in the end? It's all a kind of communication. She wanted be that marvelous figure that everyone admire and look, don't touch. That's why her and Mercury and Ganymede, they were all still with Celestial Mechanics, because they wanted to be something beyond humanity. They all believed in that dream. Even if Epteus was always manipulating that for his own goals. When it came time for Epteus to implement his plans, they threw a wrench in that. They told Epteus to go fuck himself. They shot him a lot, which is always a very effective strategy. Thanks, LT. And then they just threw a wrench into his formula. Epteus wanted the only communication between people on Earth and what his pilots were to become, to be violence. They tweaked that. They were going to discover new means of communication with each other, since they could no longer communicate as they knew how to do with hu as humans. They set out to discover new means of communication. And as far as the exchange of information between them and the humans on Earth, it was more than just violence. They became something that was out there in the stars. Celestial bodies to be admired, just like Saturn always wanted. A sort of longing Not a future just for them. A future that they could... They could be admired from Earth, but... They always had that hand extended. For when... Humans on Earth... Desired enough to come up and join them. Foundation. Lunaterra always found Earth to be beautiful in many ways, but there was always something restrictive about the gravity of Earth. There was always something restrictive about living on Earth, having to conform to the gravity of Earth to be what people around you expect you become something alien, something abhorrent. So what does she do? The Memorial Foundation wins control of the lunar gravity well. But she throws a wrench into it. In an attempt to move the decimal point of Earth's gravity. A hundredth change what's acceptable on Earth. I think there's obvious there's an obvious literal sense to changing the gravity of Earth, and I know 
expert. I'm not one to speak on how Earth would physically change if we move the decimal point on Earth's gravity. But in describing Earth's gravity as so restrictive, I think that too just sort of dials back to Earth as a society being restricted to who you can be. And by moving the decimal point of that, in a sense, Moving the decimal point on what's acceptable in society just enough, just enough to hopefully make us on this planet more open to accepting people not so like ourselves, more opening to, open to accepting the differences in us, the vast, numerous differences in us. opening into just loving your fellow human. Because we're so much, we're much, we're so capable of love. On so many levels. If we just, if we just don't wall ourselves off from the people around us. If we try to it sounds so tripe to say put ourselves in their shoes, but... If we can just try to be more understanding of the people around us... If we can just try to... Just... In our society now, we all seem so keen to stand our ground. doesn't belong in society, especially certain groups in power are especially keen on standing their ground as far as what's unacceptable. And I do wish we could move that decimal point a hundredth. One hundredth, at least. I do wish we could open their, their hearts. could get them to accept that despite our differences, we're all human. We're all human and why do why do certain aspects of us why does our race why does our sexuality why does our gender, why does that disqualify us from being human? Aren't we all human? No matter what? Why can't we all just be a bit more accepting of each other? Why can't we just have a little less hate in this world? Why can't we just love each other a bit more? Why can't we just talk, and listen, and learn from each other, and love? We can fight, we can make up, we can move on, we can grow from it. We can fight, we can talk, we can love. What's the difference, really? Let's... We can be better, but that's on us, as humans, to be better. We decide, as humans, what's alien to us, what's foreign to us. So it's on us to open that definition. It's on us to decide. It's on us to make Earth a more welcoming place.
place where we can all be loved. A place where we can all love each other. It's on us to move that decibel place just enough. I hope you enjoyed this game. This story. This just emotional experience. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope it made you feel something. It sure made me feel. Thanks again for watching. Have a good night.